Well, hi there. I am here today with the most lethal animal we have ever featured on this channel to this point, and that is the Black Widow Spider. I should probably start off by explaining a little bit about that name, the Black Widow. And, and the reason that they are called Black Widows is because they are notorious for eating their husbands, um, which is actually not that uncommon for spiders. It's kind of actually fairly normal spider behavior. Uh, but it is worth talking about because it's stinking rad. So here's the deal. When you are a male black widow, you are going to approach that female with much care. And uh, honestly, it would make a lot of sense to just not approach her at all, right? Because you know that they've got a reputation. I mean, they wouldn't be called a black widow if there wasn't a chance she was going to try to kill you. And so some male black widows may actually just not approach females at all, but they're not well represented in future generations. And those that successfully breed are the ones that come up to the web and they do a little tickle on the web to tell that female, I am not a fly. And this is super duper important because as a male black widow, you might get eaten in the next few minutes. And there are two times where this might happen. One of them would be after you mate, which stinks. The other would be right now before you mate, which stinks much, much more. And so the males that have successfully made it to the mating part in the past have been those that have indicated to her that I am not a fly. They begin thusly, I am not a fly, I'm not a fly, I'm not a fly. And when they can see her behave in such a way that they can tell that she knows that they are not a fly, they will then carefully tread onto the web. If you would be to count the legs of a spider, especially something like a tarantula, you might arrive at the number 10. And that is because they've got eight main legs, but then they've got two more pretty big leg-like appendages called pedipalps. And male spiders have these bulbous apparati at the end of their pedipalps. And in those apparati, they store sperm. And this becomes really relevant here in a moment because he's gonna sneak up to that female. Well, not sneak up. He wants her to know he's there and that he's not a fly. But he's gonna get up to her and he's gonna kind of coax her to rear back. And then he's gonna take that pedipalp with that sperm and he's gonna go, here you go, see ya. And he is gonna run for his life because he's achieved really his goal of this whole encounter, which is mating. And now goal number two becomes really important. Live to mate again. Of course, the female doesn't care if he ever mates again. It is in her best interest to get a lovely male sized meal right now so that she can produce a few more eggs and survive a little better. And so she will begin the hunt immediately chasing after that male. If he's lucky, he'll get off the web and run away and perhaps live to mate again. If he's not so lucky, he will become the victim of his former lover. Isn't that special? There is a reason that male black widows are so much smaller than female black widows. And this is actually a fairly common form of sexual dimorphism. You actually see this in a lot of reptiles uh, like snakes, a lot of snakes at least where the females can be potentially much, much larger than the males. And, and the reason to be really large as a female is pretty clear because when you're big, you can produce either a lot of eggs, a lot more eggs than you could if you were small, or much bigger babies. And either of those things are pretty advantageous when it comes to being well represented in future generations. And so that beat large body size in females has often been very successful. However, it takes a long time to get that big. And there's a, a risk involved with waiting until you get really big to start reproducing. And so males, they don't get that same benefit from getting huge. You know, if they're 10 times their size, they're still gonna fertilize all those eggs. Sperm are cheap. And so the male, he tends to mature at a much earlier age, you know, a much younger and smaller because there's no real benefit to getting large unless you have to fight for females and that's not the case with black widows. So the male black widow is actually really tiny. The female black widow is massive comparatively. She's still a pretty tiny spider. Both of them, the males and the females are awesome, but the females are the ones that are really, really cool and possibly make pretty interesting pets. One of the things 
that I think is stinking rad about Black Widows is just the fact that, I mean, this is an animal that a lot of people think is really dangerous and scary and intense, but it's not. It, it's really not. You know, there, there are people that want to keep, like, you know, some maybe some of the giant snakes and vipers and stuff because they're impressive in that same way of like, this could kill you. And Black Widows kind of get that same sort of respect from people. But the truth is, Black Widows aren't going to kill you. Not unless you're really sick or really old or really, really young. And, and even then, it's pretty hard to get one to bite you. So this is an animal that has a reputation for being dangerous, but really isn't very dangerous. That said, you still want to take some extra precautions with a Black Widow versus, like, say, a jumping spider, which we talked about before. I used to keep a lot of Black Widows. Uh, I had a, a lab when I was doing my master's. I, I did it studying uh, Nicrophorus orbiculus burying beetles, which are these just hardcore bear beetles. You've maybe never seen them before, but they're awesome, and you should look them up. Anyway, uh, in my lab, a lot of times we had to get rid of extra beetles, and I felt bad just freezing them in a freezer and having them die for no reason. But I felt pretty good about feeding them to the praying mantises and black widows and other cool invertebrates that I kept in my lab. And the black widows were really interesting because they're super careful. These beetles are bears. And they'd catch them in their web, and they'd come up, and they'd be super careful about the way that they started wrapping them up. They're very, very, very deliberate about wrapping them up and not going in for a bite or doing anything to get too close to that beetle until you've got it really quite wrapped up in silk. And then they'd go in very gingerly and carefully for a bite. And even though these beetles can just shred other beetles, they can shred spiders the size of a black widow, no problem. Only one time did I ever see a black widow get bitten. And that was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in my life because it bit her on the leg and they have very powerful jaws. And she immediately pulled away and got quite a ways away from the beetle. And she started to run her leg through her chelicerae, which are her mouth parts, and straightened out that leg, which was wild to start with. And then she took silk and she wrapped the leg in silk like a cast. I actually, I, I, I told my advisor at the time about this and he's like, you've got to write this up and I still haven't done it. You guys are the first ones ever to hear about this experience, but it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I think there might be more going on with these spiders than meets the eye. They are just fascinating and strategic and interesting and secretive and peaceful, scary little creatures. But the question of the day is this, is this potentially deadly and definitely stinking rad spider? the right pet arachnid for you. To help you figure this out, we've broken the Black Widow down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Black Widow a score of one out of five. Now, I, I will tell you, zero is on the table, and these guys don't get a zero. Like a great white shark would pretty much get a zero. The Black Widow is actually a very handleable spider. Um, you can probably handle a Black Widow and not have any problems. That said, it's not a good idea, uh, and I wouldn't recommend it. The truth is that you can have a Black Widow for a long time. I mean, I've had lots and lots of pet Black Widows. They're awesome, and I've never touched any of them because there's just never a situation where that is necessary. And because there is a decent risk involved I just don't do it. But uh, a trend I've been noticing of late is that uh, the free handling, which is like handling with bare hands, not using any other tools like um, a snake hook or tongs or any other safety equipment, but just bare hand handling of cobras and other venomous snakes has become really popular on, on YouTube and other social media of late. And, and the truth is with a lot of these animals, I mean, if you understand well the behavior of venomous snakes or venomous spiders, um, you can handle them with as little risk of a bite as you have with any other types of snakes or spiders, right? I mean, you know, most venomous snakes are just as uninclined to bite as are other snakes. I'm personally a, a person who's pretty good at reading the behavior of most snake species, and I'm, I'm good at avoiding bites. We have a whole video that we just recently released on this topic because it is very possible to minimize the probability of a bite. But the truth is, 
I do get bitten sometimes. I've been bitten four times to this point, and I have a snake with me today that might be bite number five, and probably the most intense bite I've ever received. It happens. It's just part of handling animals, that anything with a mouth can bite you, and if you do it often enough, you will get bitten. And, and the thing is, with a lot of these animals that people are free handling anymore today, even if you have antivenin, which, you know, hopefully if you're a responsible keeper and you're planning to free handle like a cobra, you're not relying that when you show up to the hospital, they have antivenin for a king cobra bite because they just might not, right? But even, even if they have it, even if they have a lot of vials of it, and it doesn't last that long, so the probability that they're keeping a ton of vials of antivenin on hand, pretty low, you know, hopefully there's a nearby zoo or other keepers somewhere who have it, even if you can get it, you still might die. This isn't this isn't a good gamble, right? Like I, I watch these videos and, and the truth is it's like, you know, you can do this for a year or two, maybe even longer, and not have an accident. But if you do this all the time for years, eventually you're going to get bitten by a very, very dangerous animal. And the black widow is nowhere near as dangerous as a lot of these animals. But they have killed people. And so, uh, I would say, don't handle them. It just isn't worth the risk. That said, uh, you know, they are very uninclined to bite. It is very easy, should you ever need to relocate the spider to a different container or, or take it out temporarily so that you can clean its enclosure, it's very easy to move them using a stick or something like that. Uh, they're not gonna just, you know, race down the stick and bite you or anything. They're very, very uninclined to bite. Usually you'd have to pin them somehow. Uh, a lot of people get bitten when they are going to the bathroom, like in a in a abandoned bathroom somewhere because they'll end up sitting on one, something like that. But generally speaking, black widows aren't gonna just come up and bite you. You know, and they, they don't move quickly, they don't tend to jump. I mean, you can have a black widow walk across your hand, no problem, right? And you know, if you do that, 99% of the time you probably won't get bitten. But you do it enough times, and the probability that you get bitten eventually goes way high. When it comes to care, we give the Black Widow a score of five out of five. You're gonna need uh, like a jar and some sticks. Uh, you know, the, the enclosure that we built for morning geckos would actually be like a way over the top enclosure, but it would work great. So, you know, you can check that out right here. That'd be a great enclosure for a Black Widow. You know, on top of that, throw an insect in there about once a week. I, I actually use my Black Widow as a fly swatter. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've got it in a jar. She's actually enjoying a meal right now, but uh, here. <laughs> I've got this one that, that was actually just given to me on my way up here. This is a, a younger Black Widow from my friend Kevin, who actually gave me both of these. And uh, I'm that guy, right? I'm that guy that when somebody's like, I got a Black Widow in a jar, I assumed you'd want it. You know, that's a good person to be. You want to be that guy. But, uh, you know, what, what I do a lot with, with a Black Widow, I'll, I'll use the jar, in this case the vial, and like when I had a fly on the ceiling in my house, I would just take this and pop it onto the fly. This is my fly swatter at home. And, you know, just like with the beetles in my lab, like I don't like to just kill stuff and have them go to waste, but when I get to feed them to a Black Widow, that's lovely. Um, what they really like is a, a not too cold, but a, a cool, dark place where they're mostly left alone. You know, that's perfect for them, um, but they're not too picky. I mean, you, you know, you can have them in your kitchen or whatever, and they're probably not going to freak out as long as you're not shaking the jar and stuff like that on a regular basis, or if, as long as it's not bright light all the time. The truth is, I mean, care, it doesn't get any easier than this. I mean, you know, this is basically the same as what we were saying for the jumping spider, and these are the two easiest animals to care for we've ever talked about on this channel. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Black Widow a score of five out of five. Um, don't freeze them to death. Don't cook them. Uh, don't squish them, which if you're not handling them, you know, and you're careful when you put the lid back on the jar, shouldn't be a problem. Keep them fed like once a week. But I mean, I, honestly, if you forgot for two weeks, they'd still be okay. Dan, that's it. I and mean, they're gonna live about a year, if, assuming you get it when it's young, and that's awesome. That's all there is to it. You go on vacation, you don't need to think about your black widows, just feed them before you go. We'd also like to 
thank those of you on Patreon who helped us get the equipment that allowed us to bring you these rad images of this Black Widow spider, as well as some of the other animals we've talked about lately, like the praying mantis and the jumping spider. It would have been so hard to film these animals, even though these animals are free, right? It would have been so hard to film these animals without your contribution. So thank you so much for all that you do for our channel. When it comes to availability, we give the Black Widow a score of five out of five. Uh, the truth is they are found in most inhabited parts of the globe. Um, there are a few places in the Arctic and the Antarctic where they don't seem to show up, but looking at range maps, you've got some member of their genus found about everywhere on Earth. So go catch one. There's actually a lot of variation in the color of black widows around the world. Some of them are spectacular. There's one in Europe that has like red blotches all over the back. Juvenile black widows here and in Australia, they've got red stripes at the back. The, f the males have very interesting colors and that, that varies dramatically. But generally speaking, the look you've got is this jet black spider with a big rounded abdomen that kind of comes to a slight point and then a red hourglass on the underside. That is your telltale sign of a black widow and that has become just a universal indicator of danger, danger, danger. I would recommend that you don't get a big plump adult female when you catch one. And, and a lot of times the juveniles, I mean, in addition to being smaller, they've also got other indicators. I know the black widows that we have here, I've got a juvenile with me today, and she's got a red stripe up her back, almost like the Australian redback spider, which would be the black widow I would recommend to those of you in Australia. They've got a, a red stripe up the back of their abdomen, but as adults, they lose that. And so if you can find one that is a juvenile, that's excellent. And, and the reason I recommend a juvenile over an adult is for one thing, it'll live a lot longer for you. And the other thing is, it's probably not about to lay a bunch of eggs because it hasn't been mated with yet as a juvenile. When you find a big plump adult female, she's probably already found a feller and probably consumed him already. And She's probably working on a whole bunch of eggs and you'll come down one day and there'll be a big egg sack in your jar. I've had this happen to me a few times and what I did in every instance of this is I just immediately took that Black Widow back to wherever I got it and released it with its egg sack because I don't really want a few hundred Black Widows, just tiny little Black Widow babies all of a sudden emerging in my house. I'm weird like that. I have seen them for sale. I don't really know what the legality is of selling these spiders. In fact, uh, a few reptile expos ago, I saw people selling brown recluse spiders, which freak me out. Uh, black widows have a neurotoxin, and uh, it's really not that big of a deal. If you get bitten by a black widow, um, you're gonna get some cramping and some pain. It's gonna feel like a little pinprick at first and the pain's gonna get more more extreme and it's gonna hurt and you'll get some cramping. And and the the worst things that can happen are that it'll, it'll cause your diaphragm to seize up and that's how people die sometimes. Um, but generally speaking, it's not gonna get that severe and uh, there, there is antivenin that exists for black widows, but most of the time the doctor's just gonna say, hey, just keep an eye on it and if it gets really extreme, let me know. You know, you might not even have to go to the hospital for a black widow bite. Brown recluse is a whole other sort of a thing because they've got a highly ne necrotic venom, which means it starts eating your flesh when they bite you. And, uh, you know, amputation is not uncommon. I have a, a cousin who was bitten on the face and they caught him while he still had the spider on his face, which I've never been bitten by a spider and seen the spider still on me, right? Like, so they caught it immediately and he's still got a scar like the length of his head down one side of his face. Right? They are freaky spiders and I've seen those for sale at expos. Black widows, there are people that sell them. I don't know, I don't know what the, if there are any laws regulating where they can be shipped or, you know, how legal they are to sell them, but you can get them uh, if you can't just find one, but I'd recommend just find one. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Black Widow spider a score of five out of five. The spider is free. You probably own a jar, even if you splurge and go for our uh, morning gecko setup that, that we talked about before. That is not expensive. Sticks are free. Uh, I don't know where you would live where you couldn't find a stick. Do make sure it doesn't have pesticides on it. If you really want to go over the top, you can bake the sticks in your oven for a little bit. 
to make sure that they uh, don't have any nasty stuff that might grow on them. But honestly, you're throwing dry sticks in a jar. You probably don't have to sweat it too much. Uh, pets are just not gonna get any cheaper than this. And that is why, overall, we give the Black Widow Spider a score of 4.2 out of 5. Black Widow Spiders are stinking rad pets for people who don't need to handle their pets. If what you want is a spider with a bad reputation, but that is actually nothing to worry about, and that is just super cheap and super easy, then the Black Widow just might be the best pet arachnid for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. There it is. There we go. Okay. Nope. No pen required. <laughs> yeah. Trying. We need to get you a special hair pen. <laughs> like a mite mini comb on the end. <laughs> yeah, I like flip. That. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them like the little eyebrow combs or whatever. You, you know, just, mm, that'd, be, that'd be glorious. <laughs> Write that on the list of things we need. Yes. Patreon. <laughs> Thank you for getting us this little pen comb for Jason. He's now master of his craft. Okay. This is a spider in a jar enjoying a mealworm. It is a great day. <laughs> Eat French now? And in the last video, there's a ha ha. Mm -hmm. A croissant. The main thing, uh, I have never seen the live action Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I see. And I'm boycotting it specifically because they turned Gaston into some sort of a villain, which he never was. He was the hero of Beauty and the Beast, and he's by far the most likable character probably ever. He, you know, he's got a, a likable arrogance, which there aren't very many people in the world that can pull that off, but one of them, who totally, ha you know, he, he can pull off the look of Gaston and the personality of Gaston, it's The Rock. All you'd have to do is French him up a little. That's true. To which Michelle responded, Yes, please. No. I, they said they should be the rock, and I was like, yeah, we should just French him up a little. And I said, I'll French him up a little. <laughs> just kidding. Into celebrities. But if you were, you'd totally be the French rock. <laughs> Absolutely stinking rad spider. The right pet reptile. Nope, that would not be it. <laughs> that was That's perfectly perfect. disturbing. <laughs> I cannot tell how close she really is. Can we try it again? I wasn't ready to. Oh, I want to see that footage first. <laughs>